Hello, Internet. Uh, today's July uh, 17th. This is my build Alpha 10 of my RPG test. Got quite a lot done. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you is a little cutscene. I showed this on my uh, my blog a few days ago, uh, running in the editor, but this is it running on the uh, the actual iPhone. So you can see there's particles for the, uh, the jets on Jetpack Snake. Uh, so those work. It's got quite a lot of particles on screen at once, and uh, they stayed on there for a minute because it's actually being simulated in the space. So if you, uh, when they move, they actually elongate and stay in position for a period of time. So that's good that that works. So I can have uh, nice particle effects in the uh, the spells and environment stuff. Uh, so another thing here is a uh, the beginnings of a battle system. So here is the pretty much what the battle system is going to look like. When you get into a battle, uh, it'll have an initial camera um, angle, and then it'll start switching to random uh, camera angles as long as there's no action being done. So you can see there's two jetpack snakes right now, very imposing. Uh, it's going to be a real-time battle system right now, so these bars right here, there's one there, one at about 50% and 30%. Once those reach all the way to the bottom and the background behind the character info becomes opaque, then you just select them and it will pretty much pause everything and then you select your action that you're going to do like attack or magic, item, defend, stuff like that. And then uh, once you select like, for example, attack, it'll switch to a view of just the enemies and then you just click on the enemy that you want to attack and it will uh, go and do that. I'm also putting in a timed uh, a timed damage system so that as the character is running up and hitting, if you tap on the screen at a certain time, you'll do a bit more damage. And same for defending. And I'm not sure about magic yet, but uh, so far it's guaranteed for attack and defense. So that's that. I also put in uh, a way to randomize which uh, enemies that you get. So if we go back to the menu here, and then do this again, we might get a different set of enemies. No, nope, that's the same. It's random, so you never know. Uh, let's just try this one more time and see what we get. Okay, so yeah, now you get, uh, you're get you up against five of these dog things. Uh, I only have it so that there's three different sets of enemies right now, but uh, uh, once this goes full scale, basically, I can make any combination of enemies uh, uh, as it is. And you can... Uh, change around the uh, which player you want in which position. I'm not sure if there's going to be a forward and a back yet, but uh, that's the way it is now. Um, I still haven't put in any of the actual gamey stuff yet for the, uh, the battle system. I've just got it set up for everything in the beginning of the battle, so all of these enemies spawn in their correct positions, all the players spawn in their correct positions, and now I'm going to start moving into the more complicated uh, menus and uh, the actual battle mechanics but so far everything's working exactly how I want it. Uh, the uh, the frame rate is a bit slow on uh, older models. This is on the 3GS and it's uh, it's definitely playable but on the older ones I'm dev definitely gonna have to uh, optimize a lot. Uh, so let's go into the game proper. Like you've all seen this before but now I put in a step counter so that boom right there uh, if this were the real game, you get uh, pretty much the screen would stop and it'd do some sort of effect and then you go into a battle. I haven't put that in yet there, but I ha do have this notification here saying that, okay, yes, you have met the uh, walk the appropriate amount of steps to actually trigger a battle. And then I put in an area here. This, it's an outdoor dungeon area. And you can see the camera is following the player. I haven't put in any... Uh, more elaborate cameras than this but it just it took me a while to try and figure out how to do this so that little white thing down there the camera is actually locked to that and not to the player and I have that little capsule there locked to the player so that's my kind of workaround to get the uh, the follow camera working correctly and uh, here's another thing that I put in so this is an iPhone so obviously you're going to be receiving calls and uh, uh, doing other stuff with it instead of just playing games, which is still kind of awesome. Uh, so say you're in the game, you get a phone call. And let's simulate that by just pressing the home button. 
oh no, I forgot to save. Whatever will I do? Well, I put in a system so that it auto saves. It's right there, the continue button at the top. Hit that or right where we came from. So that is a definitely a must have for uh, anything on the iPhone and is totally working. I have it set up so that it won't autosave in the middle of battles or in the middle of cutscenes or conversations. So it'll bring you back right before you did any of those things. And to show this, uh, this camera a little more, here's another outdoor area. So you see the camera is just following the player here I'm going to change this uh, this camera setup in uh, future builds, but uh, you can see it follows the player up there into an indoor area. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle the uh, seeing through there, but uh, that's pretty much how it looks right now. Uh, still on the to-do list is to make a mini-map, but it's definitely getting there. It's looking a lot more like a game now, isn't it? I'm actually I'm pretty proud of this. Put a lot of work into it, and uh, hopefully it'll pay off in the, uh, the near future. So once I finish my first game and uh, dive headfirst into this, it should turn out into something pretty special. So I think that's going to be it for this, uh, this RPG update. Um, expect another one in a few days, probably. Thanks for watching.